Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Nera, for the introduction. Uh, it was always happy to be here to uh, present our product, uh, our technology, and talk with you uh, about uh, about Scaleway. So um, I'm sure you currently enjoy summertime, but uh, it's uh, great you are you are with us. <laughs> uh, so today with Emma, we are representing the Kubernetes uh, team for Scaleway, and uh, we'll uh, help you to go from zero to hero and uh, get started with Kubernetes. So if we keep our promise, uh, it should be a short webinar, actually, uh, in less than 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, but we'll do uh, first uh, a, f a presentation about Scaleway. As we open uh, the webinar for everyone, uh, there is some people here who uh, do do don't know us. So we'll uh, present us uh, shortly. Uh, then uh, a second part, second part about uh, Kubernetes and application uh, library. Uh, we'll go directly to the subject. And uh, Emma will do a live demo uh, to show you how to be a hero with uh, Kubernetes. And uh, at the end, we'll do a Q&A session. So feel free to ask your question in the chat. It's uh, in the bottom. Uh, right, you have a, a section dedicated to questions, so uh, feel free to, uh, to ask us. And uh, same things with uh, comments and uh, remarks, uh, you can uh, share with us. Um, so let's get started. Uh, about Scaleway, uh, a small section about us, who we are. Uh, so we are a member of uh, Iliad Group, we are a French uh, a cloud provider. Uh, Scaleway has more than uh, 20 years of experience uh, in IT infrastructure, um, and we are more than uh, 500 person now. Uh, we provide three different uh, services, uh, going from private uh, infrastructure, meaning uh, colocation in our data center. Then we have a dedicated server and a public cloud offer. Uh, currently, we tend to merge. Uh, sorry, I didn't. Uh, uh, switch the slide. <laughs> we tend to merge the dedicated and the public uh, public offer. Uh, important fact as well: we own uh, seven different uh, data centers in Europe. We have a full region in Paris, and uh, we have a, a data center as well in, in uh, Netherlands and in in Poland. Uh, so, as we uh, provide a, a full cloud ecosystem, uh, we have. Uh, product uh, around uh, uh, computing, storage, networking, IoT, uh, AI, uh, everything so you can uh, deploy and scale your application uh, with our cloud. Uh, so if we go into uh, into details, it means we have more than uh, 40 different uh, services uh, to provide you um, in different uh, areas. And uh, we are constantly looking for innovation and for new products. Uh, we release almost every month uh, uh, new things. So for example, this month, we will launch a public beta for database uh, Redis. Uh, so you can uh, try it uh, in the console and uh, give your feedbacks to the team. So we'll be very happy to have your, your remarks. So now you, you know a bit more about, about us. Uh, we can go uh, into, the, into the subject. Uh, what is uh, Kubernetes and application uh, library uh, and uh, explain you uh, why it will help you to master uh, better Kubernetes and become the hero of this webinar. So let's have a look uh, on, on, a, on a small refresh on Kubernetes. Um, we'll do, we can do a short, uh, a short reminder what it is. Uh, Hello. So <laughs> I wanted to have your opinion if it was needed or not. Uh, what does the pool say? Okay. <laughs> I was a bit, a bit, uh, a bit fast. Huh? There is a pool. Oh, okay. I will do. I will do a refresh on Kubernetes, so everyone will be on the same level. Uh, so if we uh, speak about uh, Kubernetes, I'm sure you already hear about uh, what it is. Um, it's, a, it's an open source uh, platform for managing uh, containerized workloads and services. Uh, when you have many uh, containers, uh, you need to automate and, uh, and go uh, 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 at scale with your containers. And Kubernetes is the perfect platform to do it. Uh, if we go a little bit 
a bit deeper into details. Uh, I took here a diagram of our capsule uh, Kubernetes uh, with a different component. Uh, if we start with uh, the left part, is a control plane. It's like uh, the brain of uh, your Kubernetes uh, um, engine. It controls everything that happens uh, inside uh, your, uh, your Kubernetes, your containers, like uh, auto-scaling or auto-healing. Then we have the worker node, uh, which masters the pods, and the pods are where the containers are located. And bes besides uh, that, Uh, we have the block storage and the load balancer. There are other components. Uh, block storage are here to keep the data uh, persistent, as the rest of the infrastructure is not as uh, persistent. And the load balancer is here used uh, to handle the network and uh, use uh, as, a, as a proxy. Uh, last things, but not least, a container registry is very important because it's here where you store the image of your containers, uh, where, where you put the, the knowledge of, the, of each container uh, that you want to deploy. So at Scaleway, uh, we have a, a, an ecosystem uh, around Kubernetes. Uh, we have uh, three different products. Uh, the first one is Capsule, as you will just uh, see uh, in the, the previous uh, slide. It's our in-house uh, managed Kubernetes. If you want to deploy the containers on our instances, uh, like uh, development instances, Uh, GPU or general purpose instances. Uh, we released uh, last month the Pro 2 instances, so you can use it uh, as well. Kubernetes Cosmol is uh, almost the same, but it's to deploy everywhere. If you want to deploy uh, around the uh, hybrid cloud or cross cloud initiative, you can use it uh, for that. And Container Registry is uh, here to store the image of your container, as, just, as I just say uh, previously. Uh, in a private or public uh, public way. So now you have a, a better understanding of what, what is Kubernetes. We can go uh, on an application library, what it is, uh, and uh, how you can launch an application in a uh, few clicks. Uh, so a short, short definition. Up, application library, uh, actually, we provide uh, a set of pre-contained applications that you can deploy easily in uh, just a few clicks. Uh, it's a feature of our managed uh, Kubernetes. And uh, we can do these features thanks to uh, uh, something called uh, Elm chart. Uh, so you don't need to have any configuration. Uh, we give you uh, a package that you can deploy very easily. Uh, so I speak about Helm chart. Uh, we can uh, have a short description of what it is. Uh, Helm chart actually is, a, is like a, a package. It's a, it's a concept inside uh, Kubernetes. Uh, it actually describes a set of Kubernetes resources uh, inside a YAML. So it, uh, inside the YAML, you will find uh, all the indication uh, for the deployment of an application. Uh, but actually, Emma will go uh, into the details of that during the live demo, so I will, I will don't go uh, any further. Uh, so uh, I, I speak about uh, application. Here is a list of applications we provide. So uh, in our, our console, you can uh, deploy a GitLab, Jenkins, Vault, Kafka, uh, WordPress, or even Hodoo. We have also uh, traffic, engines, uh, proxy, or Argo CD. You can also uh, create your own uh, deployment, your own uh, YAML, or adapt an existing YAML. Uh, so uh, you can adapt to your needs. Uh, so it's very easy. And we will add uh, in the future other application in function of your request or your feedback. I would be uh, very aware of it. Uh, so, so, a short uh, uh, memo as well. Why we don't use, um, uh, we use YAML. There is other tool uh, available like uh, Terraform, Pulumi, or other deployment tool. Uh, but uh, we, we choose to speak about application library and YAML and um, chart. But actually, it's very simple because we are in a Kubernetes context. And this tool, uh, they are here to uh, deploy everything. They are here to uh, Uh, in a complex uh, cloud environment, and uh, we just want to stay to remain in a Kubernetes complex. 
uh, and it's much more complex to use these tools than uh, M chart. So with the application library, um, you it's very easy to save time. Uh, just in, uh, in in a second, you can uh, launch uh, uh, application as I just uh, show you the, the list. Uh, you don't need to go into the different setup. Uh, you trust uh, the M chart and uh, you can deploy the application very easily. Uh, it uh, it go with different uh, use cases. So, for example, if you would, would like to level up your team uh, on this uh, Kubernetes technology, uh, so, so your team can uh, deploy applications they know, they maybe already deploy it on a virtual machine, and see how it can be deployed on Kubernetes. Uh, as well, if you would like to use uh, very quickly a well-known uh, tool for your stack. Uh, you don't have to search on internet uh, how to deploy it with containers and so on. Uh, you have yeah, just the right configuration on in few clicks, it's here in your stack. Uh, another one is if you want to create your own catalog of application ready to be uh, deployed for your team, uh, you can uh, have it here and use mchart uh, for that. So I think, and I hope especially, <laughs> you have a better understanding uh, of what is uh, application library at Scaleway and how you could use it uh, inside your, your cloud environment. Um, I, I will uh, let you with uh, Emma for, for the demo. Uh, she uh, will uh, show you how to deploy a Kubernetes uh, in front of you. But she just left the webinar. Or... Yes, she has a small issue with her video, but she should be back in a minute okay. with us. Uh, is, is there any question in the meantime or any comment? Or... Um, no questions so far, but please feel free to ask any questions you may have in the questions tab. Maybe we can take a minute or two to answer them now or uh, after the demo. Yeah, <laughs> just so it's not the right time to, to go back, <laughs> to leave. Ah. network issue. Ah, we have one question. Alexander, if you want to take it. Uh, pop up. Try to find the right tabs. Question. Yes, the answer is uh, yes. <laughs> but uh, you need to attend the whole webinar. So it's uh, like a gift at the end <laughs> that we provide to uh, to everyone. But uh, yeah, surely we, we have some, some stuff for you. Um, to, uh, to share with you. It was an easy question. Uh... <laughs> yeah, so as, as Alexandre mentioned, we'll be sharing uh, some voucher codes at the end of the yeah. webinar. Uh, They'll be valuable for a month for you to use. So stick around until the end and uh, we'll share the code with you. Emma, you're here? I'm back. Yes, I okay. am. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I had some uh, network issues apparently, but I well, am. I was about back. to start the demo without you. Huh? Oh, really? Who are you? <laughs> okay. Um, I don't really believe you. Okay, sorry, everyone. Uh, I'm here, so and apparently it's working. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, no, we're going to. We have a few slides first. Um, so. Um, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, okay, um, so the need, uh, as uh, Alexandre explained, uh, to uh, have the application library is actually to simplify the um, Kubernetes. And the idea is that getting starting with Kubernetes can be quite painful, and the learning curve is quite, um, quite a step to take. Um, so we have a lot of different users with a lot of different uh, Kubernetes knowledge. The idea is that we want to make it less uh, difficult for them to actually learn about Kubernetes and discover how it's using. And what is better to actually than to actually look into a working example of something that is actually working in production, right? So uh, what's going to happen in the demonstration? I will create a capsule cluster uh, to be quiet. Uh, easy, uh, as you will see. I will only use uh, two tools, actually. I will only use the UI from the Scaleway console 
and uh, my uh, shell terminal. Um, and everything that every action that will be performed on the cluster will be done by the Scaleway console. So we're going to create a cluster, we're going to deploy a WordPress application in it. Uh, we're going to play a bit with the different object that is actually created and what it actually what actually happened on our cluster. Um, and then we're going to change to deploy another application. So Grafana, change a bit the settings. And uh, hopefully it will be fast enough so I can show you uh, also how to you can deploy your own application easily on your on your uh, cluster from our container registry. So let's go. Up. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I left. Okay. So uh, first thing first, uh, I'm here logged in in my uh, Scaleway console. And uh, if I, if you haven't used it before and that you want to create a cluster, it's pretty simple. You can choose here uh, what kind of cluster you want. So as uh, Alexandre explained before, you have capsule or Cosmos options, so Cosmos for uh, cross-cloud uh, clusters. You can choose the region, the version of Kubernetes, and you can choose a name. So we have a generated name, but you can really choose whatever you want. The idea is that after that, you can choose the configuration of your cluster and say how many instances of what kind you want in your cluster. So it's very easy and fast to configure. You can just choose uh, instances and say how many of them you want. So you can create a cluster, uh, a, a very big cluster or a small one, it doesn't really matter. And you can also choose the configuration of auto scaling or uh, auto healing to configure what kind of cluster that you want. And that's pretty much it, okay? So a Kubernetes capsule cluster is free and you only pay for the nodes, so the working nodes that you um, add to your cluster. And pretty much that's it. So when you want to create a cluster, you just click on it, the cluster will be in creation, and it will take from uh, maybe one minute to have the control plane ready, and after you just have to wait for the instances to be there, maybe one minute more, and that will be it. But since I don't really want to wait uh, for one minute because it's a short webinar, uh, I'm going to use another cluster that I already uh, set up here. And so when you have a cluster that is ready, uh, here you can see that I have two nodes in that cluster. So two small dev instances. Um, you have that overview page where you can configure a bunch of things. And the first thing that you want to do is to actually download the config file. So the kubeconfig file is a file that is actually con containing the credentials to actually connect to your cluster because you can't see what's inside if you're not connected to it, right? So once you download the kubeconfig, you are able to use the kubectl command, right? So First thing that you need to do on your uh, local machine is if you want to use Q Kubernetes and to actually connect to a cluster is to use kubectl, so to install it. Um, if I show you here, uh, I set up the kubeconfig uh, environment variable. So it's actually uh, linked to my kubeconfig webinar YAML, which is the one that I downloaded from here. So now I have a cluster. I can see here that um, I can ask to list how many nodes I have in it. I have the two nodes that I uh, mentioned before. So here they are. And if I look into my cluster, I can just um, list whatever is inside the default uh, namespace. I don't have much, right? Okay. So I have an empty cluster. I can just check that I have no namespace that I created. So here I have only the system namespace for kube to actually work and the default one, which I just uh, looked at, which is quite empty. So what I'm going to do is actually, I want to deploy something. So I'm going to go into the tab, um, easy deploy here and to click on deploy an application. 
And here I am with uh, the, the option between registry and application library. So I start with application library here, and I'll choose from the catalog of, uh, of application that I have here. So I have uh, for now a bunch of them. So if you if there are applications that you particularly like and that you would need, don't hesitate to tell us, uh, write a feature request, and we can see if we can if we can actually um, add it to uh, to the library. So here I select a WordPress. I see that uh, we have some pre-configured uh, configuration to configure the load balancer that is from Scaleway service and the block storage also uh, default uh, Scaleway block storage. So that if we need persistent storage in that image, it actually works with uh, our instances and our block storage. I can choose a name. Uh, what is this WordPress? So I can choose a name for my application and I can choose to deploy it in on a specific namespace. So as we saw here, I have a default namespace, but since I'm going to deploy a bunch of things and I don't want to be it to be too messy, I'm going to create a, a namespace dedicated for WordPress. I just name it WordPress and I'll just deploy the application. Okay, so now what happened on our cluster? Just hoping that is big enough. So, okay, first thing that happens that I can explore into my, uh, into my cluster is that I can see that I actually have a WordPress application here, a WordPress uh, namespace that has been created. So now if I want to actually look into it and see uh, what's inside, I'm going to ask uh, what's inside the namespace WordPress. Okay, and now we have stuff. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, first thing first, the deployment. So that's the first object that we are looking into, and that's the thing that we actually deployed the application. So it's the deployment uh, with, it created a replica set. So we are kind of discovering here um, the Kubernetes objects that we are dealing with. We didn't do any configuration. We don't really know what it is, but we don't really need to, right? But we're discovering the difference. Um, we said that we have a load um, We also have a load balancer here for service WordPress. And we have here two pods. So as stated before by Alexon, uh, pods are where you have the containers running, right? So we have one here that corresponds, if you look at the ID, to the replica set, which corresponds to the deployment. Uh, so it's our WordPress application. And we are also a MariaDB, so we have a database to actually store our data. And the thing is interesting is that we see that here we have a replica set for WordPress, but for MariaDB, we have another object, which is a stateful set. So it's kind of a first clue um, to see that we have different objects that serve different purposes. And we can see here the difference into the naming of the two pods that are running into those two different objects. So first thing I'm going to do is that, okay, I have a load balancer here and I said that before uh, it allowed us to actually use Scaleway resources. So I'm going to look here in my console in the load balancer and I see that I actually have a load balancer that has been created on my account. And I can check that the IP here is the same as the external IP that I have here. And now if I want to, to connect to it, let's see. And I have an Hello World WordPress that is actually running. So that's great. I'm going to look a bit into it. Okay, it looks like it works. Uh, let's put a comment. Okay, let's post something. Okay, it looks like waiting for moderation. Okay, so it looks like that thing is working. Um, but now I'm going to want something that actually uh, WordPress, like a lot of um, software as a service, you have an admin page, right? To actually load something on it. 
So if I go to it, so the loading page, it's login page, you can find it easily on the internet. It's always WP login. And I have it here with username and password. So, okay, what's the password, right? Um, I didn't set any password. So what did application library do? Well, actually, since I didn't set a password at the beginning, it actually generated a secured password and stored it as a secret in Kubernetes. And in my cluster, if I list what is a secret, oh, here I don't say anything. Why? Because I'm not in the namespace. Well, press. So if I look into it, okay, so it created a bunch of secrets. Um, so let's look a bit into it. Um, and let's edit just to, to look at what it is. Okay, so here I opened a secret and um, I see that it has a bunch of configuration and that the data here is what is going to be interesting, the WordPress password. So if I'm going to try that into my login page, it's not going to work because that password is encoded. So I will need to decode um, the, I'm actually going to decode the, um, the secret to have the password. So I'm just going to go into the documentation and look at the command line. Um, Emma, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but I think we lost your screen share. So maybe if you oh. can click again. Sorry. No problem. Okay, is it back? Yeah, it's back now. Okay, so I'm basically on the internet. Um, okay, so I see that I can have here a comment to decode a secret. So I'll just run that. So oop. I I'll keep that. Oh, well, let's just remember how it's called, right? Well, press password. Um, so get secret, let's look, the name of the secret, okay, I have it, the minus O, JSON path, and it's dot data dot, and here, the name of the password. Up, and bid four. And I must have done something wrong. Um, yeah, I didn't put the name of the of the secret, so it's not going to work. And my secret is this one. Okay, and here I have a decoded password. So let's just try it. Actually, I'm not going to go into it, but if you look at the um, at the YAML of the um, of the application, you see that the username generated is user. So I'll just have to trust me on this one so we can go a bit further. I don't want to look in. And here I'm logged in. Um, and I can connect to whatever. I see here that I have a comment. I can accept it. I can play with it. I have access to everything. And I just looked into my cluster and discovered um, the secret, the password, how to connect to my application. And I can really use my WordPress as I want now that it's here. So that's the first use that we can have, just actually playing with it, discovering different objects into our cluster, uh, playing with it. That's really the main thing is that we, I think the best way to actually um, discover Kubernetes is actually to uh, play with a working example and discover how it works. So we see that we have load balancer, we can use an external IP, we can dig into the difference between replica set and stay for cell and play a bit with it to discover the differences. Now, if I want to accelerate a bit and I'm going to go back here and to deploy another application. So I'm going back to my cluster and this time I'm going to deploy a um, Grafana application. Here, same, I'm pre-configured. 
stuff. Um, I'll create a namespace also for that, so it's not too messy in my cluster. I'm going to deploy it. So here, um, I see that I have a Grafana namespace. And I have one replica of Grafana in the same E here. It created another load balancer. You can also see it here. Now I have two of them. And I can access the Grafana um, login page. Uh, okay. Maybe it's not up yet. <laughs> I'm a bit too, uh, uh, I want to be a bit too fast. Anyway, don't really matter. So, um, in the same way as before, I can see that in my uh, kubectl, kubectl get um, secrets in the namespace Grafana, it created also some secrets. And I can see exactly the same as before here is that if I want to look into this secret, I will have the admin password encrypted again and the admin user this time, which is also encrypted. And with the same comment as we saw before, I can get those values and actually connect to my Grafana cluster. Now, uh, the thing is here, we don't see, um, we don't see much, right? We have only one, inst one Grafana that is running. So what we want to do is maybe to deploy maybe three uh, instances of Grafana. So there is multiple ways that we can actually do that. That the first is we can, so I'm going to deploy another one. Okay, and here I can edit actually. And uh, I don't remember if there is an S in replicas. So sorry, I'll just, yes, there is an S. I can just set how many replicas I want and I can deploy it. And I stay it in, a, in the default namespace this time. And why doesn't it want to work? Well, it doesn't really matter. I can go back to the other one to show you. It's fine. Here, I can update the actual configuration of the application that I deployed using the Easy Deploy. So here, I see the whole configuration of the YAML that is used for, well, that's basically the ARM chart. So that's the complete configuration of what is deployed in production. There is a lot of stuff here, um, a lot of stuff that is defined by default, so you don't really have to change it. Um, but you can also update a few things. So here, for example, you see the service load balancer. It's where I say that I want to use a load balancer to expose my service uh, outside on the internet, but I can use other techniques. I can use a cluster IP, for example, uh, if I want to use it only internally to the cluster. Um, I have a bunch of possibilities and I can just discover and play a bit with it to see what happens. I think that I have also the port redirection here. Um, and I have, if I'm going, into group. There's a lot of lines here. So I'm just going to select everything because I'm a bit lazy. Put that here. One for up. Here, I have a number of replicas. So here, if I want to update it, I can just change the number of replicas and update my application and look at what's going to happen. And here I see that I asked my application to update and to actually level up to deploy 10 different endpoints, oh, well, not endpoints, but 10 different pods containing my Grafana. And I see that I have the previous one that are uh, kind of killing themselves. And here I still have one same deployment, but since it's kind of 
migrating to one to, from one to another. I have different stateful replica sets here. And now, yeah, and now everything is running. And I see here that I still have the other object, the replica set that was here before, but it's now in zero because I don't want them anymore. I want to have 10 instances of them. So that's the kind of thing that you can do with uh, is deploy. So you can actually update your uh, cluster and play with the configuration. You can scale up. I can also rechange the um, uh, change again the number of replicas to scale down to three, maybe of them. Oops. And I can pretty much play with it and see how it behaves. And last thing that we can also do from um, from the easy deploy feature, which is not specifically the application part, but once you actually have an image that you want to deploy, that an image that is yours, that software that you actually know, you can actually select it from uh, your container registry. So if you're using the container registry of Scaleware, you can choose the container that you want to deploy. It has to be public for that feature specifically for now. And then you can kind of choose the way you want to deploy it. So it can either be a simple deployment, you can expose port with a load balancer, you can say um, that you want to export the port um, 80, but you can also map port like we saw before, uh, if, you're, if you're using the port uh, 3000, you can do something like that to actually map the load balancer to the right port of uh, your application can also choose the replicas, add environment variable to, for, to have it working, um, deploy it in a namespace, choose the, the, the name of the application and just, um, and just click and just deploy it. Why doesn't it work today? I'm suggesting that there is a production that is running right now. Um, <laughs> It's the time that we actually put things in production. So anyway, um, and so this way you can just deploy whatever you actually want and look at how it works on your cluster and how it behaves. So that's the idea behind the easy deploy is that you can play really with your application and also for more experienced user, you can deploy stuff that you might need like a CI CD or um, uh, WordPress or whatever, because that doesn't really add values to your day job. That is not something that you want to take time to actually deploy. Um, and so you might just want to have something that is running fast in production and that's it. So yeah, and that's it. Oh yeah, default portal is 3000 for Grafana. Thanks, should have put it. I really didn't look at it. It was written actually. Yeah, thank you, Emma. Uh, now we have many, many questions. <laughs> Not that many, but uh, I would guess uh, 15, something like that. So I'll, I'll let you uh, start. Maybe uh, yeah. the one with more points. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, if you have any question that you put in the chat, please put it in the in the questions tab, so we have everything at the same uh, at the same uh, space. Um, okay, so uh, could you highlight the IAM management, especially the duration between instances of capsule, uh, the organization, the members, and the world? So for now, uh, we are uh, working into the IAM. Um, integration. So the current management of users and uh, accesses in Capsule is only managed by the kubeconfig. So anyone that actually has the right uh, kubeconfig can connect to the cluster. Um, the idea is that with the IAM management, we will be able to um, define roles and permissions that are linked to um, to the actual Kubernetes world. Um, so what we want to do in the future and in the integration that we want to do on access management on Capsule and Cosmos um, is to actually map the, the 
permission that you have in Kubernetes with the permission that you have in the Scaleway console. So this way you can define in the Scaleway console, you will be able to define um, access for a namespace, for example, to some users, and those users will only have access to that specific namespace, that kind of thing. But for now, it's not uh, implemented yet. There's no state for the workplace. Upload images, file posted in an article only for DB or on the stage in DB also. Uh, I haven't looked into the specifics of uh, the uh, WordPress, how WordPress actually stored um, stuff. So I guess um, if you want, well, so multiple things. The database, so the MariaDB database that is deployed with the WordPress contains the data and maybe also uh, contains um, bigger files, such as uh, images uh, and, and such. But if you have a persistent volume, so uh, when you have the storage that is created to actually uh, have persistent data persistence in your cluster, it won't show into um, the comment that I just uh, ran. It will uh, show if you asked for persistent volumes to actually show up. And then you will see that you have block storages that are here and that you can actually look into your Scaleway console into the instance tab and you will see that I actually also created block storages without even knowing it just to have the persistency of my data. Um, as for images and, and such, um, you can probably also configure the YAML of the, of the app to link to another kind of storage. It's really a matter of configuration. The idea of this deploy is to actually allow you to do a lot less configuration that you might want to. You can still configure it. That's the idea of playing and learning with it. Um, but for now, um, it's um, the behavior of the official community managed uh, M chart for WordPress is just to have a MariaDB with um, a block storage. So. And yeah, if you want to look in your cluster, it will be more, um, okay, I'm sorry, uh, it's actually, uh, it will be a persistent volume claim that you want to list or uh, persistent volumes, that kind of Kubernetes objects. Um, can we use Terraform and other actual like, instead of the same interface? Yes. So you can use um, yes and no. Uh, you can use the the um, client, the Scaleway client, to um, create your cluster. You can also use Terraform to create the cluster. Obviously, the easy deploy is an API. So since it's used by the um, by the interface, you can also use it directly. Um, the main thing is that if you have enough Kubernetes knowledge to actually know how to use Terraform, you don't really need the easy deploy to learn and play on how to deploy something fast. You can just use the Elm installation directly, uh, configure it, and use it as you want. Um, the easy deploy and the app library is really meant to go fast and really test and uh, play with the environment and learn about Kubernetes. It's really how to make Kubernetes easier. Um, feature request, okay, you sent the link. Is it possible to use K9S? Okay, what do you want to do? <laughs> Please specify what you want to do. <laughs> um, is there any Scaleway provider plugin for Terraform? Uh, you'll have to look into Terraform on how exactly is it, it is managed, but uh, I'll say yes, we have uh, the integration of uh, Terraform. Uh, I, don't have the, I don't know where to find the link right now. There is inside more or less just a you know, wrapper around chart. Um, more or less, the idea is 
apart from that, what we want to do is, of course, wrap uh, the M chart, pre-configure the, um, the specifics of Scaleway ecosystem, such as the load balancer, the block storage, and maybe other services that will come afterwards. Um, and we also, um, yeah, the, the idea is really to make it as easy as possible to learn from it. The thing is, we are also, if you deploy an application from the container registry in the um, using the AZ deploy, it will actually convert um, convert it to an M chart. So if you want to generate an L chart uh, format to actually deploy uh, your own uh, application, you can just do it in the in the console, and then you can describe it and just get the file from it if you're kind of feeling lazy about doing your own uh, M chart. The idea is that we convert everything to M chart. Um, and what we also want to do is that not only to um, open community managed uh, applications, we also want to have like a dedicated um, GitHub where you can submit your own projects and um, put them at the disposal of the community to actually deploy any tool um, on any cluster. So the idea behind that is to go a bit further and to actually extend the, the catalog that we can have and the integration also of our community inside, uh, inside that, uh, that feature. Uh, any free trial code can be shared about the webinar? No, it wasn't so uh, when you, you left. You ah. left us. <laughs> yeah, when I, dis when I disappeared. Yes. OK. Um, I want to create a pipeline in an external GitLab, which deploy on Scaleway registry and then Kubernetes cluster. How can I do? Um, so basically, um, if you look into the um, if you're going to the container registry, you see that you can create uh, you can create a namespace, um, and that's where you are actually going to put your images. In that, you have all the different uh, steps that are written in the interface to uh, tell you how to deploy or how to push an image on the registry. Um, so this way, you can you you have all the different commands that you need to use and that you can configure in your pipeline. Uh, you need to configure also uh, an access key to uh, have to allow your external pipeline to connect to your uh, Scaleway, um, Scaleway objects. And uh, once you have your uh, container in your registry, you can uh, yeah you can automate the deployment. So using pretty much the tool you're more comfortable with. So you can still use your uh, pipeline to order the deployment. And it's pretty much the same. You have to connect. So you have your to have the um, configuration of your cluster that is loaded into your pipeline so it can have access to it. And then you can uh, just deploy it, update the version and stuff. So it's like creating a whole pipeline. You will need a bit more than uh, two minutes to answer if you want to go into the detail of how to do it. But um, you just need to have the right credentials and to um, it, really, it should run smoothly. Do you have any plans for next feature? I guess I kind of answered that before with uh, uh, open. Uh, well, for the next feature of the easy deploy, I answered. Uh, next features uh, about our Kubernetes offers, more specific, uh, less specifically to easy deploy. Um, we have um, we have the private network uh, implementation that is planned for this year, uh, and also uh, for end of year, start of next year, we'll have um, multi AZ uh, private network clusters. So that's the I'd say the big uh, main topics that we have currently. Uh, on disk. Mm. 
I guess you can decode using your password because you're an admin of the cluster. I can deploy it because I have the config file. So since I can connect to it, I can uh, I can decode it. Um, and as I stated before, with the IAM integration, what we will want to do is to restrict some uh, of those rights. And so this way, maybe you won't be, everyone won't be able to actually access to the secret. And so won't have access to those resources and won't be able to decode it. Um, why is dev1 instance available? Um, because the memory of the dev1 instances is uh, I think one one G or two. Um, it's very small, and uh, on each node, a Kubernetes node, you have to run kubelet, and kubelet takes up to one gigabytes of memory. So basically, if we allowed Dev one instances, once there is everything installed on it, you won't be able to use it and to run anything on it. So it's useless. So that's why we don't because it will be very disappointing you won't be able to run anything on it. Uh, all the child used in, uh, directly in access or directly accessible. So they're community-based. Uh, the idea is that we want to add the link to actually so see the ARM chart and um, directly so you can access it. No, uh, the network issue again. Um, so yeah, they are available, they are um, public, they are community-based, so you can uh, look for them on internet uh, quite simply. You can, you will be able, when we add the link, to directly access it from the library. Uh, but the parts that are uh, in the configuration when you actually deploy, so the load balancer and the um, scaleway block storage uh, definition, that overrides on top of the official end chart. So if you want to get the end chart that actually works on Scaleway fully configured, you have to kind of measure the two. Uh, tick, tick, tick. So do we have a way to forecast the pricing of additional resource deployed by application memory, load balancer? So load balancer and block storages are the two resources that are uh, going to be able to be created um, if you use easy deploy because it's the way you want to expose the service um, and how you want to have your data persistent. Um, block storage is fixed price. Um, you don't have the estimation inside the application library because it can depend on every application. Maybe some of them might not use them. Uh, you can also remove the load balancer part and decide not to expose your app on the internet. That's another possibility. Um, if you use the load balancer, it will systematically use the um, load balancer S. So um, you don't have the pricing. You can see the pricing adapt for the load balancer. If you go on the deploy from registry part and you ask for the load balancer, you have the pricing that is set because this way you actually ask for it. So it's written. Um, and um, I lost the question. Yeah, um, And yeah, that's pretty much it, I guess. Um, can I deploy application from application using YAML configs or do I have to use the console? The idea of the of the easy deploy is really to not have to be bothered with the console, with the, with the YAML. That's really the idea is to get that abstraction and get started fast. If you have your YAMLs, um, you, can, you can just deploy, uh, apply them on your cluster. Like it's a kubectl apply minus f the name of your file of your YAML file and it's apply on your cluster. So if you don't want to use the console um, because you have a YAML, uh, you can just deploy it normally as any uh, more advanced Kubernetes user would do. Mm. How often do you upgrade managed cluster? Um, multiple thing here. You can set uh, an auto upgrade. Uh, on, on the overview of your cluster, you can set an auto upgrade slot for uh, the minor Kubernetes updates. 
so you can uh, schedule maintenance. Um, now, as for how often do we force updates of the clusters, um, we do it a few months after uh, after a version is completely de uh, deprecated. So what we do is that we first we warn the customer that we ask them to upgrade the cluster themselves, so they are aware that they have to change the version and to update their nodes. And um, if they don't, we have a page on the documentation website where we actually explain the version management that we have and how often we we update the clusters and when we set dates at which we are going to upgrade force upgrade the cluster we use it you we rewrite it into the documentation website so the, the information is always accessible uh, okay mm -hmm. Okay, uh, for a very simple project, which only a back Java container and a back Node.js container to us, do you think it's more easy to deploy through container register or manage it on, on or, I would say um, it's, I would, for, I would obviously say that um, using capsule is the easiest way to do because of the feature it provides. So you don't have dev1 insta s instances available. So you have to start with an M, but you have the auto healing, you have the Kubernetes feature that will allow your application if there is an issue, if you have um, an out of memory or something, um, it will just relaunch your application. You can also manage replicates with Kubernetes. So I would say even with a simple application, um, you want to do as less maintenance as you want, right? So I would use Capsule for it. Uh, if you prefer to manage it kind of yourself, you can use directly an instance, but I would say it's it would be easier for something simple to to use capsule and probably the deploy for that. Uh, is there any other question? I see one here. <laughs> That's a lot of questions. <laughs> can we? <laughs> That's the last one. Okay. Uh, can we deploy a configuration that creates user resources into different data center? Very similar for redundancy. Yes, if you're using Kubernetes Cosmos. So Kubernetes Cosmos, it's our uh, multi-cloud, cross-cloud offer. So it is that the control plane is managed by Scaleway, but you can create instances in all regions. So you can have Paris, um, Amsterdam, Varsovie in the same cluster, and you can also have um, AWS instances or GCP instances, Ethnare instances, whatever even a dedicated server that you have uh, on another provider or a computer that you have connected to a network at home, uh, you can connect it to the cluster. And if you don't uh, specify that, um, if you don't uh, configure something specific such as, um, I want those applications to be only on Scaleware and that kind of stuff, it will spread across all the instances that there is on your cluster. So you can uh, actually have that redundancy if you're using Qantas Cosmos. And you can use it with uh, easy deploy also. It works with Cosmos. Uh, ah, there is no one. I think we have done uh, all the questions. Now it's time. Uh, uh, there is a K9, but uh, we don't know what, what is the purpose. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe Jack uh, will come to us uh, directly. Yeah. Um, so, as I say, we have a, a small uh, gift present for uh, the attendees. Um, so, for new account, uh, we offer you a 200 uh, voucher value with the code uh, below. Normally, Nera, you should uh, you should give it uh, in the chat so you can just copy paste and follow the console for the for the new account. 
uh, we'd be happy to uh, to give you the opportunity to try uh, to try the, this uh, this features application library uh, and for current uh, client uh, we give you also the an opportunity uh, to uh, to give us uh, your feedback uh, with this uh, with this chat and uh, we also uh, get some time if you would like to have uh, a 30 minutes consulting uh, with our team with our kubernetes team uh, we, we don't have uh, extensive uh, time to uh, to give to everyone so uh, we maybe uh, cannot answer all the people <laughs> but uh, if we feel there is uh, an interesting use case uh, and we can help you uh, very easily I uh, will take time uh, to. So there is the uh, yeah. So, thank you, Nera. You you share the form. Uh, you can have access, and uh, even if you don't need any uh, any minutes with us, uh, we'll be happy to have your feedback and uh, how you could improve this kind of uh, webinar. It's always great. But uh, I hope you you spend a good time. You learn stuff. Uh, thank you, Emma, for your great uh, demonstration. It was a good uh, good demo. And uh, Nera, maybe you have a last word to say before closing in. Yeah, just uh, thank you everyone once again uh, for joining us today. Thanks a lot, Emma, for the demo and answering all the questions. Thank you, Alexandre, as well. Uh, as you we mentioned in the beginning, the recording will be sent tomorrow. Uh, so keep an eye out on that. You will receive additional resources uh, in that email as well. And if you have any other questions, you can always reach out to us at events at scaleway.com. And with that, that's it from us for today. We hope to see you soon at one of our other events, webinars, and other community uh, gatherings. So thank you, everyone, and uh, have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.